Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, if I sound a little congested, the pollen has been, the tree pollen has been high here in North Carolina. We've had some very, very warm days and so I've got the itchy eyes and the all the gross stuff. So yeah, so sorry if I sound a little more nasally than usual. Um, but before I headed off to work today, I wanted to share this with you guys. Here, jingling in there. So at my last show, I just got this out of the mailbox. I'm kind of intrigued and excited a little bit. Um, at my last show, um, I had someone mention to me the art o -Mat machines. I don't know if you guys have heard of these. I had never heard of them. Apparently, they've been around since like the late 90s, and it's a really cool concept. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to bust into this without scissors, but um, it's basically like the old-timey cigarette machines, you know, where you pull them. I remember those. I go way back. Um, my parents smoked. I never did. So I remember those. And so someone has turned, what is his name? Clark Whittington is the person who runs this whole shindig and turned those machines into art -o mats instead of cigarette vending machines. And so you can put your art in them. And I think it's like $5 to get an original piece of artwork. So I was like, well, that's interesting. So I immediately started Googling and looking into it. And I ordered this, which is a little kit um, to help get you started. So, yeah, I'm going to flip you guys around in a minute. So the art of mat. Oh, yeah, see, there's a picture of the old things. So you pull the and you get a little box of an original artwork. So I thought it was very interesting. Um... And so this, it has some fun stuff in it that I'm going to flip you guys around and show you and take a look at. So basically, my thoughts on this from the research that I did before I even ordered this, the kit was $20. Um, and it gives you, I think, like a block the size of what the artwork can be or the jewelry if you're doing jewelry or some little sculpture, right, and how to get it all put together. Um, this isn't like a huge way to make money. Let me just say that because ultimately I think after I ran the numbers and said, okay, if every single one of my art pieces were to sell, ultimately I think I would end up with like $80. So, and you make like 50 pieces of art, small ones. So it's not about the money aspect of it, definitely. <laughs> but I think one, it's kind of a cool marketing idea and interesting to see like where your artwork ends up like who's buying it from where um and two i think it's just a fun idea like i've always you know one of my missions is kind of to make arts and crafts like make the art world accessible to everyone you know it's part of why i work for a nonprofit because i really believe in that i think we need to get art like what good art is the concept of that out of the gallery system and something that's untouchable or un understandable for people and make people realize that art is everywhere that, that artists are everywhere and that everyone's creative works have value in some way and stop being so snooty and stuck up about it and stop having the art world feel so elitist because that's just stupid and lame. So I think it's just a really cool idea that someone could have an original little piece of artwork for $5 and get to know something about who made it and have that. And like, it's just a fun way to connect. So um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, but let's flip around and I will open this up with you guys. I'm curious to see what's in it. So let's get into this. Inside of this bag are materials to formulate your Artomat prototype submission. We hope that you will incorporate our project into your creative approach slash practice and stay involved for the long term. If you need anything during the formulation of your prototype, please visit www.artomat.org and let us know how we can be of assistance. So, oh yeah, so since 1997. So this is kind of cool, yeah, and there are some rules and regulations about doing this. So basically this is a kit um, to create an artwork for submission. You don't have to buy the kit. I did because I have no idea, um, exactly. Like they give you plenty of instruction, but I felt like by the time I figured out a way to rig all of this up and figure it out, I might as well just buy this and follow the path of what they're offering. So you create the artwork, or, you know, whether it's a two-dimensional artwork or um, 
3D or jewelry and you submit it and they give you approval. And if you're approved, then you can go forth and create, um, I think it's 50 pieces. So these are the boxes, two different types of boxes that they also offer that you can purchase. Um, so yeah, super cute. Little cigarette size boxes, right? For your block to fit in. And one of the requirements I know is that it has to fit in this kind of box or some sort of box exactly to these dimensions and wrapped in cellophane. So this is the cellophane. So then I guess, yeah, so then you just wrap it in this. Okay, so I'm assuming. Look at me not reading instructions. Imagine that. Um, which I'm glad they have this. Oh yeah, because the old the cigarette box. I, I'm just trying to think back to when my my parents smoked and I was a kid. So they yeah they only had the like wrapper around here right. So my thought was maybe I had to wrap the whole thing. So I'm glad I got this and cleared that up. Um, but yeah, it has to be a certain size otherwise it gets stuck in the machine right. So I figure just use what they're giving me. And these are the blocks. So the blocks fit right into the boxes, nice and smooth right in theory I'm assuming <laughs> they're supposed to let's see oh is it not gonna fit well that's embarrassing does the other one fit maybe I'm doing something wrong it should fit in the box it's supposed to fit in the box huh well I don't know what to do about that all right let me um let me look into this and see. But the, the blocks, they said they recommend that um, you do your 2D artwork on this. So you draw on this or paint on this or whatever. But it, it's just kerfuddling me that it doesn't... I mean, I know how to use a box, right? Let me try it from the other end and see if maybe it's just getting hung up on something. No? Well, technical difficulties. That's not a good sign stressing me out maybe it's just that one box okay I'll come back to that um oh a little eraser and a pencil to do some sketching I suppose notes so this little notebook little sketchbook that's cute for his or hers or its proprietary use in formulating concepts ideas for Artemat Okay, so here it gives you the instructions, the vending size of what it should be. I'm assuming that's what the, the blocks are, the size that the blocks are. Um, and then it gives you some instruction. 2D artists can use blocks. 3D artists can use boxes. Oh, so maybe you don't have to put it in the box. Okay, so maybe this just gets wrapped in the cellophane then, right? Okay, so, okay, so that makes more sense. All right. Okay, this is cute. Okay, so all art requires acetate. So I'm, I'm thinking the acetate sheet so that it slides out of the machine, right? That makes sense. Hand sign each piece, include contact information and or bio with each piece. Consider presentation on the sides. Let me get that down there so you guys can see the whole thing. Um, enticing box exterior titles or edition numbers. So this is great. So this is... um. Okay, and then yes, so this, there's a, you're supposed to create like a placard, like a square, I think, identifying you as the artist and your information. So, um, so that people know where to find you. So the interface between Artemat, Art, and Patron is a two-inch placard identifying the content of each column. Oh, so this goes in the front right so that's these little placards right here so you create the two inch placard and then your art goes in there so that's really cool I'm gonna get this a close-up see if you guys can see some of the different things so you put kind of your aesthetic and your name on the front so people get some idea of what they might be getting so that's pretty cool um, successful placard design effectively communicates the true nature of the art and conveys a reasonable expectation of what the buyer will receive. So two inches square, supply 10 per edition. Just keep it simple. All right, so a little, um, the live area of an Artemat block. 
Oh, so this is your little sketchbook. So this gives you um, a place to sketch with the perfect size, boom, right? To create designs and play around before going straight into the blocks. So I appreciate that. And then the only other thing it says, after the original Artemat was installed, the owner of Penny University Coffee Shop asked C. Whittington to explain his concept to a regular customer. Then the most unexpected and profound positive compliment an artist could ever receive soon followed. Your art is right smart. That's cute. WSNC Police Officer, June 1997. So, um, and then everything, this is just blank pages. So it's pretty cut and dry. Um, even include, I love the little metal pencil sharpeners, by the way. I think these are the best, especially for colored pencils, just a side note. So, um, yeah, so I guess then the artwork just goes on to this block if you're doing 2D. And if you have jewelry or sculptures, you can use these boxes, kind of fill them in, put some earrings or some jewelry in there, right? Decorate the box a little bit. Um, and so pretty simple. What is this little guy? Kerplunking culture since 1997. A little pin. Oh, that's a nice little touch. So, all right. So that's kind of interesting. Don't go around artless. Very cool. So I'm kind of excited about this. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I'm trying to decide between drawing and painting on these. So I think I'm definitely going to use my little sketchbook to come up with some ideas. All right, flip you guys around again while I'm talking for a minute. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. Um, I think it probably makes the most sense to go with one sort of theme, right? Since um, you, you make the little placard with kind of a concept of what people can expect and then obviously each block is going to be unique because you're hand drawing or painting or whatever on each block. Um, it's smooth. It's really smooth surface. I was just thinking because I've started playing around with printmaking a little bit, but that gets complicated. So I don't, I don't think that would be a really good plan, but maybe you could carve something in there, like a little carving, create a relief or something but I think the main thing is to keep the surface flat because from what I did read on the instructions that I printed out for it um, you, again you don't want anything to get stuck in the machine as it's being vended out right like so you don't want anything on the surface they they actually request not to do I think collage um, and something else um, because stuff can oh they said not to use Mod Podge as well so um, because it gets sticky, right? If you've ever done anything with Mod Podge, if you're in any sort of humidity or heat, it, it always wants to get sticky again. So I think just keeping it simple, just not my forte, <laughs> um, as simple as possible. And I'm going to think about it and I'm going to play around with these two blocks. I'm going to make some sketches and just kind of meditate on it and think about what I want to do to put out there. And I will just take you guys along the journey and the process with this and the steps that I'm going through with it and see how it goes. So if you're interested in doing this too, let me know in the comments, or if you have done this, I would love to hear your experiences with it and what it was like and, um, and like kind of what you did and how it worked out for you too. So I think it's a really fun idea. I think it's a fun way to get artwork out there among people. And, um, and I did find that there is one here in Greensboro. So I may, just try to remember and take a little trip one weekend to it and just buy a piece of artwork, right? Um, support other artists as well. So yes, um, I will keep you guys updated on it. And again, let me know what your experiences have been, or if you just bought some artwork from somebody somewhere, um, I'd be curious on that as well. So, all right, you guys, um, that's it for right now. I will see you soon. Have a great day.